and welcome to the parlor. Today I'll be going over my painting process for this piece of Dimitri from Fire Emblem Three Hopes. So when I start off with the composition, I often already have an image in mind. In this case, it was Dimitri from a low angle, looking very kingly, holding a banner that would have the Fargus flag on it, and um, with a lion in the background. And then I decided to add um, this motif of skulls and flowers, which is one of my favorites because it represents life and death. So here we have a lot of bones and flowers in the foreground. We have paint splashes, we have a lion, and later I would actually swap out this uh, flag for Ariadbar, his weapon, um, just because the flag is kind of off in the corner and it would take too much attention if it had this complicated crest on it. So I decided maybe it would just be best to scrap it and instead um, have his weapon be there. That way we don't have too many things competing for visual attention in the center of the piece. So once the composition sketch is done, I'm just going in, adding more details and kind of getting a form. Um, of the piece. We're correcting some of the anatomy, we're adding facial structure, and we are fixing any errors along the way. From there I start building um, cleaner lines out of the sketch. I will often just draw directly on the sketch layer and erase directly on it. Once the line art is complete, I'm now going back onto the rest of the canvas and kind of tidying up the composition. I'm adding in some flat colors. Uh, I add in a little of a color wash and start making some rough brush strokes um, in the background with some different colors. Uh, I found pretty early on this cyan and gold combination which will end up looking really nice. Once I have a general idea for the background and I have some of the basic lighting down, it's time for me to make a grayscale map of uh, the character to see how the character fits in with the lighting. And I like to have the background painted in before I start doing this for the character just to see how the lighting will turn out and to make everything mesh together smoothly. When the grayscale map is done on the character, I create a new layer in overlay mode and start adding colors um, using this overlay mode. This helps me change out colors as I need to and I also find it gives a pretty organic result compared to uh, just trying to paint over my light map. Once the overlay layer is complete, it's time to start merging it down and painting in details. So I merge down the overlay layer onto the grayscale map and I go in and I just kind of start manually painting in details like the skin, the hair, I go over and color the line art. Um, I've also made a new layer for fine details like fur and hair that will go over the line art and I call this layer overline. One of my favorite ways to paint metal is um, while keeping the light map in mind, I just add a harsh shadow in the middle of where the highlights end and where the shadows begin. This kind of simulates this mirror-like shiny effect um, that is pretty simple and both looks a little bit realistic and reflective while still meshing very well with an anime art style. Now that most of the character is shaded, we're going to go to the foreground and the background and start adding in a few details, add some basic shading and lighting, and just kind of get a feel for how the whole piece is going to look as a whole. For the final step on the character, something I like to do is go back and add bloom lighting, which is basically brightening up the areas around where there are very harsh highlights, so around the top of the hair, um, the top of the pauldron, and anywhere where you would feel like would be glowing under intense light. Now usually I do this actually with an airbrush, a soft airbrush to give a kind of iridescent camera glow. In this case though we have a lot of rough traditional brush strokes in the background and um, a soft airbrush would probably stand out. So instead what I'm doing here is going over the highlights with a rough brush. Um, that is the same texture as our background and kind of pulling the light up and down over the bright areas and this will help kind of add that bloom lighting while still making sure the highlights mesh in correctly with the piece. Once the lighting on the character is finalized, it's time to go back and just add a bunch of details to the foreground 
Usually, the closer to the edge that foreground and background details get, the blurrier and less detailed they'll become. Um, first of all, it just saves you a lot of trouble. <laughs> and then, second of all, um, you don't want too much stuff at the edge competing for visual interest of the center of your piece. So often, it'll be a little more blurry or indistinct. We're doing the same thing as we did on the character, which is using a rough brush to add a little bit of texture and bloom light onto our foreground and background. Again, just to mesh everything and make sure it all plays nicely together. With the foreground out of the way, it's now time to add the finishing touches with this lion element in the back. No, at first I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I know I wanted it to be very rough because I wanted to keep these um, blue paint strokes. I thought that was a very striking image. And I also wanted to make sure that all the focus on the piece would be on Dimitri and not some photorealistic lion just suddenly pouncing out of the background. So I ended up with kind of this rough paintbrush graffiti look, which I ended up really liking. And I added some um, striking blue areas to the lion, such as blood dripping off the teeth, and these kind of blue tears coming out of its eye. We add some finishing touches with lighting, a few more paint strokes, and then one final golden whirl that sort of looks like a signature. And that is our piece! Thank you for joining me on this speed paint. I hope that it was helpful in some way and helped you learn something.